Hey, what's going on guys? This video, I wanted to talk about read-only properties. Monday.com is your visual project management solution. This is the tool that allows you to see where every task or project stands with a single glance. With a fully customizable interface, you can create the exact workflow that you need for you and your team to get stuff done. Monday.com is available on mobile and integrates well with some of the most popular tools out there. So get your life in order by giving it a try for free. Link in the description. Now we've talked about this a little bit, and in fact, if you take a look at our user class, we created this full name, which only has a get. Therefore, it's technically a read-only property. But this is a bad example because this property really only just gets values from other properties. What if we wanted to make first name or last name read-only? That's what we want to try to do, but it brings up a potential issue. If the first name and last name are read-only, how do they get that initial value? Well, one way is to assign it here. But the big problem with this is that not every single object is going to be named Caleb. Thank goodness, that would be so confusing. So that's not really a good solution. So what you want to do is you actually want to create a constructor that allows for that value to be passed in. And then after that point, it's no longer modifiable. So we'll do that from the student class, which is derived from user. So we can assign values to first name and last name, just like we did here. So copy this constructor, we created that in the previous video, and that'll allow us to assign an initial value to first name and last name. But if we want to prevent them from being changed, we can go into user.cs and get rid of this set here. Great. Now in our calling code, what we're going to do is we're going to assign the initial values. And you can see when we try to change them by saying first name and setting it to something else, you can see we get an error. Cannot be assigned to, it is read only. But now we get the added benefit that we are able to give that initial value, so we should still be able to do an output and get what we expect. You can see we're actually getting an error, and that's because I made a really big mistake. <laughs> I mean, it's minor, but obviously it's not letting us run that code. So going inside a student, we're assigning these values, but that's not allowed, remember, because they are read only. So what we actually need to do is we need to create a constructor at the user level because then it will be able to access those properties. So inside a user, we're just going to pretty much copy this constructor and we'll paste that down here. And get rid of student, replace that with user. And everything else should be the same. Now all you gotta do to invoke that constructor is put a colon here and say base, pass in first name and last name. Get rid of this here, get rid of those errors. And you can see we're not getting any errors. We should be good. Let's compile and just make sure everything's working. Okay, you can see it says, hi, I'm a student. My name is Jingle Euro. Back to the code. It All it is doing is just calling that student constructor. So that's quite a bit of information. Make sure you go through this to really understand how to properly make read-only properties with the ability to assign the initial value through the constructor. Perfect if you need the ability to set that initial value, but then you want it to be permanent. That's all I got for you guys in this video. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.